The Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus, a year after its first release, still holds pretty well in a lot of aspects even in 2020. What surprises me in this revisit is how great the phone was and still is. But a lot of people overlook it because of newer phones. So today, let's take a quick look at the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus and the top reasons to buy now. Hi guys, Remy here again, and today, let's take a quick revisit of the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. First, let's talk about its few key specs and how they stack in 2020. And finally, the top reasons why you should get one now. So first is its build and design. The design of the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus features the beautiful aluminum side trims that is sandwiched by the front and rear glass panels. On the front, it has the always talk about punch hole camera or infinity o display, which has mixed reactions from a lot of people with its pill-shaped cutout placed on the right side. Unfortunately, the notification LED light has been removed, which I think is an underrated feature that when taken out, you'll never realize how useful it was. But I believe it's one small setback in order for a greater leap going forward with its features and functionality. It also has a curved glass screen, which is more subtle, and the curves are not that pronounced, which is a good thing, as it still looks sleek but without the unnecessary touches you get on extremely curved displays. Also, it has the first generation of ultrasonic in-display fingerprint sensor, which is quite great based on my personal experience. For sure, the fingerprint sensor of old is still much more reliable. But having an in-display fingerprint sensor just gives it a premium feel and giving you your money's worth. And take note that it isn't a slouch itself and can hold its own in terms of snappiness and quick response. So this is a great bonus feature for the Galaxy S10 Plus. On the left side, you have the typical volume rockers and the infamous Bixby button, but is now remappable to another function. So that shouldn't worry you. On the top, we have the SIM card and memory tray which is handy if you need extra storage or space. On the right side, we have the power button which I think is slightly higher and harder to reach. But as time goes by, you just get used to it which is not a big deal. And on the bottom, first you have the USB Type-C charging port for fast charging. The speaker grills which by the way, has one of the best speakers for a smartphone. And the ever miss headphone jack. This is quite satisfying seeing the headphone jack on the S10 Plus, but sad to say this is the last flagship phone that Samsung included the headphone jack. And lastly on the back, we have a heart rate monitor and 12 megapixel camera which we'll talk about later. So for its build and design in 2020, it still holds its own and it doesn't feel an age to it. Unlike other smartphones, the design of the S10 Plus doesn't make it feel outdated even after newer designs have come out. Thanks to its sleek curved edge, bold and daring punch hole cutout on the upper right, and the aluminum trim that perfectly accents the sandwich glass panels. Next is its camera. It has a total of 5 cameras on this phone, which is great when you think about the potential of this phone to capture great photos. On the back, it has 3 cameras, and on the front, it has 2 cameras. On the rear camera, it has a standard 12 megapixel main sensor camera with optical image stabilization and has an aperture that can shift from f1.5 for night shots and f2.4 for regular day shots. This is great for the average people because it is convenient for point and shoot and we don't need to toggle a lot of settings. The second camera is an ultra-wide 16 megapixel camera with f2.2 sensor for landscape shots and wide angle shots, which is great for capturing sceneries and beautiful landscapes. The third and last rear camera is a 12 megapixel telesensor for zooming. This can be quite handy for you to zoom while taking pictures, but without losing most of its quality and detail. For its video quality, you can record up to 4K at 60 frames per second. In real-world usage, the video quality has been great, and I personally use the Estens camera for my YouTube videos, and it has really done wonders for me. I know it may be inferior to true DSL cameras, but if you're a small YouTuber that's still starting, then having a reliable video on your phone is great. Meanwhile on the front, you have the 10 megapixel front facing or selfie camera which is paired with a second lens of 8 megapixel unit for adding depth to portrait shots. 
The secondary sensor ups the selfie game on this one because it basically improves the image processing and images captured on the main sensor, which enables for better quality portrait or selfie shot. For its video quality, you can record selfie videos up to 4K at 30 frames per second. In 2020, this is still great and handy feature and taking photos and videos on an S10 Plus will do you wonders. Next key spec is the internals. It has the Samsung Exynos 9820 chip or equivalent to the Snapdragon 855. In my opinion, the Exynos version is a bit inferior but in totality, there is not much of a difference in real-world usage. It also has 8 gigs of RAM which is great as it can manage to run many applications at a time without refreshing or lagging. Quite great for true multitasking which is quite manageable for Android phones. It has the Android 10 and Samsung One UI 2.1 for its operating system, which is still updated to the latest version, so security and updates are not a problem since it is still practically a newer phone. It has a base storage of 128 gigs, which for me should be the minimum in today's standards since files, videos, photos, and apps are getting larger and heavier by day. And coupled with the more improved and more updated specs, the system memory will surely take up a lot of space, so having a base of 128 gigs for me is the right way to go. All of these key internal specs equate to great smartphone experience overall. My day-to-day -day task has been smooth and extremely fast even in 2020. I rarely experience lags and stutters, and these are all because of the great chipset and huge RAM of the S10 Plus, which I think is a nice way to future-proof the device. And the cream of the crop is its super huge 4100 milliamp hour battery that will last you a day easily, or even two days of light or moderate usage. Batteries degrade over time, and having an extremely large base battery will last you for years, even with gradual degradation of its battery. So for those who want a phone that will last you for a couple years, the S10 Plus is a great deal for 2020. Lastly for the key specs is its display. It has a 6.4 inch Super AMOLED display which is one of the best even in today's standards. It also has a screen resolution of 1440 by 3040 and a 551 pixel per inch ratio which equates to superior viewing experience with its balance of colors, saturation, sharpness, and vividness of the display. Its aspect ratio is 19 by 9 which is great for media consumption because of its 2 by 1 aspect ratio. Your viewing experience fits most of the industry standard configurations of videos. Also, the larger screen enables more info on your phone at a single time, without the need for scrolling to see a lot of information. The display in any Samsung flagship phone in general is great, and there's a reason they're at the top of the game when it comes to display. They make tons of displays for other phone manufacturers, but they reserve the best of the best for their own flagships like what we see on the S10 Plus. So after the quick revisit of its key specs, we now go to the top reasons to buy the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. So the first reason is its price. This is for me the most compelling reason to get the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. After a year, Galaxy phones in general will usually drop its prices, especially used ones on the market. A once $800 phone can now be bought at $500 or cheaper. That's almost half its price. And what's amazing is you don't lose so much in buying a used Galaxy S10 Plus phone. Just make sure that the condition is still pristine and mint and there are no issues and defects. You basically save yourself half of the price but still enjoy all of its premium features and functions. This is the perfect time to get one because you get the most out of its price drop but still retain all of its features and just slightly drop of the battery life. That's it. So for me, the first reason to get the S10 Plus in 2020 is its price. The second reason is the headphone jack. I don't know about you, but having a headphone jack on a pricey phone should be a standard. Now I understand that things must be sacrificed in order to go to the wireless or seamless way. But it's great to have the option to use wired headphones or earbuds. Different people have different needs, but having the option of using wired headphones, which by the way a lot still do, is a great feature that makes you buy the S10 Plus. You're assured of a premium flagship that will last for years and still having the good old-fashioned headphone jack. The third and final reason is its display. It's not a top reasons video of a Samsung phone if you don't include the display. The display is simply top-notch, and having arguably the best display for 2019 alongside the Note 10, 
assures you of quality media consumption and smartphone experience. You can truly say you got your money's worth by simply looking at the display. You will constantly be amazed even after months of everyday use. That's what it did for me, and I can truly say that the display alone can be a compelling reason of getting the S10 Plus. So that's all guys, and thank you so much for sticking till the end. That was my revisit of the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus and the top reasons to get one now. Hopefully you enjoyed the video guys, and if you find the video helpful, please leave a like. And for more content on tech, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon for more updates on tech. I am a new tech YouTuber guys, and it would be a great help if you can leave a comment about my videos and hopefully I can apply them on my next. And lastly, if you have any comments or suggestions, we can gladly discuss them on the comment section below. Again, this has been Remy. Bye!